History is built on attempts to remember. Collecting artifacts, publishing books, taking pictures. It all aims to preserve those fleeting moments that define who we are so they don't die with the people that experience them. We try so hard to remember because life is ephemeral. Once you die, the person you've nurtured and developed over your life instantly disappears and there's no guarantee anyone will talk about you or preserve your legacy after you're gone. But there's a chance to live forever if the people around you remember you and pass on your stories. When we actively make an effort to remember the lives of dead people, we try to set an example of what we want for ourselves when we die. We all want to be remembered. And that need to live on through memories is the central theme in the movie Coco. Coco is about a little boy named Miguel that gets trapped in the land of the dead. While there, he meets a man who offers to help him get back to the real world in exchange for keeping his memory alive when Miguel returns to the land of the living. Or our world. This man wants to keep his memory alive because once someone is forgotten by people in the real world, they disappear in the land of the dead. And obviously, he didn't want that. It wasn't hard for me to relate to this theme. My biggest fear outside of the inevitable zombie apocalypse is being forgotten when I die. Almost everything I pursue is in an effort to do something memorable that will stay with people after I'm gone. But that really shouldn't be too much of a surprise considering I post weekly videos to the internet. But unless you subscribe to the idea that the dead live on in the afterlife through memories, being remembered after you die shouldn't matter. I mean, you're dead. Christian, Jewish, atheist, what people decide to do after you die shouldn't change the outcome. That thought got me thinking of another question that Coco really doesn't touch on, but I feel is important to ask in the context of the movie and life. And that question is, what's worse? People forgetting you or you forgetting yourself? Now, for those of you who came for Coco, I'll be discussing this question in a broader sense, but I'll reference the movie throughout the video because I think it highlights something important within the theme of forgetting yourself. Now, getting back to the question. I don't mean forgetting who you are in a philosophical way like in Lion King. I literally mean forgetting who you are, like physically not being able to recall your memories. To explain why I think your personal memories are so important, let's start by saying that you're not a person. You're not how you look or how you sound, your memories. Your personality, how you act, what you think, is a manifestation of all the experiences your brain thinks are important enough to remember. Unless you decide to commit something to memory or your brain says, yeah, I think I'll hold on to that experience. That piece of your life is gone. When you forget major memories, you essentially lose part of yourself. But forgetting stuff is an essential part of being a functional human who's constantly growing and changing. I mean, if you remembered every line of every movie you'd ever seen, you'd go crazy. But what happens when your brain won't let you remember the important things? Like how it burnt when you touched the stove when it was hot. Or how it felt when you had your heart broken for the first time. Or your name. That stuff all goes away when someone gets Alzheimer's disease. Everything that was you is erased. And when that happens, more often than not, you stop being a person and become more of a puppet in somebody else's life. Like Coco, Miguel's grandmother in the world of the living. It wasn't explicitly stated in the movie, but Coco has Alzheimer's. She doesn't remember the names of her family, where she is, or how old she is. Mama Coco has trouble remembering things. Papa is coming home? No, Mama. It's okay. I'm here. Who are you? And because she's forgotten everything, she's not really an active member of the story. She's more of a set piece in the life of the family. She can often be seen left in corners in empty rooms, or in the house while everyone else is outside. Everyone in that family seems to care more about preserving the legacy of dead people than remembering who they are while they're still alive. You have your family here to guide you! All driven by the idea that they want people to do the same for them when they die. You want to end up like that man? Forgotten? But like I said, people don't have to be dead to be forgotten. Alzheimer's is a way that people forget you while you're still alive. My grandmother had Alzheimer's. My immediate family, i.e. my parents, my brothers, and I, saw past the memory loss and saw her as a person. Either my mom, my dad, or me would visit her every day. However, not everyone in our family saw her from our perspective. That even though she lost her memory, she still deserved to be remembered. The reason they gave was, and I quote, She doesn't even remember me. She's dead to me. Let's pause here to think about that line. It might seem easy to brush off people with Alzheimer's because they're not aware enough to speak up for themselves. But the thing is, they're still the same person that laughed with you and cried with you and shared those special moments with you. But since the people who are suffering can't remember those times themselves, no one else feels the need to remember either. It was both weird and sad to see my once vibrant and caring grandmother turn into a shell of the person she once was. When she was younger, I'm sure she had hopes and ambitions, had her heart broken, was passionate about things. But none of that matters now. She lost herself and when she did, she lost a lot of her family and friends too. And now we get to the part of the video where I talk about the importance of music. 
That thing I didn't mention in the intro, but was a huge part of the movie Coco. Music acts like a mental time machine. With the first note of a song, you can be sucked back to that road trip you took with your family, or that grade 8 Valentine's Day dance you've been trying to suppress. Music does this by bypassing the part of your brain that remembers the visuals or the memories themselves, and activates the part of your brain that remembers the emotions. So you don't only remember the event, but you remember the feelings that event elicited. Like I said, all we are is memories, and by connecting us to our past, music connects us with ourselves. In Coco, music grounds characters and reminds them of who they are, including Coco. When Miguel plays her a song her father used to sing to her when she was a little girl, almost immediately she can vividly recount her childhood. Remember me. My papa used to sing me that song. This is the only time in the movie when Coco isn't just left alone in the corner of a room or is a passive member of a scene. She's surrounded by her family. Music reminded them of the person that Coco was before Alzheimer's took her mind. And that sequence of events wasn't some magical deus ex machina conjured up for the movie. Music transcends Alzheimer's in real life too. My grandmother was unresponsive in the last two years of her life. She was nonverbal, didn't know how to feed herself, and rarely looked people in the eye. One day during one of my parents' daily visits, my mom sat beside her while she was laying in bed and sang to her. For the first time in a year, and the last time in her life, my grandmother stared my mom directly in the eyes and started talking. Ma, I love you. I love you too. Thank you. I you to be happy. I love you. For a moment, she reverted back to who she was. But let's sway away from my personal story and go back to the question that prompted this discussion. Which is worse, people forgetting you, or you forgetting yourself? Well, while the thought of you evaporating into nothingness is scary, it really means nothing in the grand scheme of everything that has happened, is happening, or will happen in the world. But when someone gets Alzheimer's and forgets themselves, too often those people are thrown in the garbage while they're still alive. There are a lot of selfish people in this world. Most people are only concerned about themselves and their own legacy. And when you can't help them, even emotionally, those people tend to not want you anymore. So make memories, do what you can to remember, and try not to forget the people who can't remember themselves. Because if you don't remember them, you're setting an example for other people to do the same thing to you when your time comes. I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. You take the page and then you give some to me for memory. <laughs>